Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. The Golden Samuel attack has made some news these last few days and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about it. So SAML is a standard that's being used to authenticate users and the one application that is really affected here is something called federated identity. If you as an organization sign up for a web service, for example, Office 365 or Amazon support this, you can basically tell Microsoft, hey, if someone from my organization is trying to connect to you, send them to us, we'll authenticate them and then verify whether they are a legitimate user. Now, this is first of all a pretty good idea. You now have one central spot, your existing Active Directory service that you use to manage your users. And your users have a consistent user interface, a one username and password that they use in order to authenticate to these cloud services. In addition, it allows you to implement things like two-factor authentication relatively cheaply. You just need one token, for example, that is used with your Active directory service and then again you can leverage this to authenticate users for these different cloud services. The way the mechanics of this work is that a user is going to the cloud service trying to log in. The cloud service will now redirect the user to your authentication service. With that redirect there will be a challenge that's being attached to the URL. Your service after authenticating the user signs that challenge using a secret key and that signature is now used to verify that this is a legitimate user. Things go bad and that shouldn't really be a surprise if someone compromises your Active Directory service and gets a hold of that secret key. This secret key is usually not changed very often. It's fairly static and then used to sign these challenges. Of course, anybody who has access to the secret key can then sign arbitrary challenges. While the basic principle isn't really anything new, what has really come out now is a relatively easy tool that can be used to create those signatures. The tool called Shimit is essentially able to take these requests that you are getting from these cloud services using the stolen secret key and then returning the correct response. And of course, while you on your own authentication server may enforce things like two-factor authentication, well, uh, the attacker server, of course, doesn't necessarily have to do that. And in addition, the attacker doesn't even need to know any user's passwords. Using that secret key, the attacker is now able to impersonate any user whose identity can be verified using your authentication server. So what should you do? Well, uh, first of all, don't panic. This is not a critical vulnerability in my opinion. It does require that someone first compromised your authentication server and got a hold of the private key. At this point, there isn't really all that much you can do. You should, of course, occasionally change these private keys. But remember, if an attacker has access to your authentication server, they can probably just get the new key as well. So not really that much you can do about the attack. Uh, on the receiving side, if you're trusting other SAML servers, it's certainly worthwhile to consider only allowing signatures that were created within a certain time frame. Because the other problem here is that of course an attacker could create then a signature that actually gives the attacker access for a very long time to the particular service. So if you limit this, then at least if now the attacker got discovered and the victim did change their signing keys, then at least any fraudulent assertions may be of limited value. And of course, you definitely should focus your monitoring efforts on assets like authentication servers to hopefully detect compromise fairly early. And we got a brief and simple write-up on a bug in Facebook's polls that was recently discovered and was awarded a $10,000 bug bounty. 
This is yet again one of those very simple but hard to avoid web application vulnerabilities. Well, hard to avoid if you don't have a real well working consistent authentication and access control infrastructure for your web application. The problem here was pretty straightforward once you know what the problem is. And well, uh, you could create a poll. With this poll, you can upload an image and then that image will be displayed with your poll. So pretty straightforward up to this point. Now, the image that's displayed is identified by an image ID. When you upload the image, you can change that ID. Now, now, an image with the ID that you now provide may already exist and it's not your image. So uh, this image will be shown as part of your poll. With this, you can essentially look at arbitrary images that users have uploaded in the past to Facebook. But this is not where it ended. There was an additional problem that came up when you deleted your poll. When you delete your poll, all the images that are associated with that poll are deleted as well. And in this case, you would then be able to delete a stranger's photo. So pretty nice and educational vulnerability here. Really hard to get this straight and all working correctly in a complex application like Facebook. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.